There we go. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, welcome. Thank yes. you. Sorry that I'm late. No worries. We were talking about some of the other things we have lined up for the week. So um, we were talking about a, a happy hour later today at 5 p.m. Um, and then we have another oh, nice. a couple of webinars, uh, one with Rick Francis uh, Thursday morning at 8.30, uh, moderated by Mr. Brian Crow, talking about how to get our economy started again. And then another one by Orange142, uh, which will also be on Thursday at 11 a.m. That will be uh, conducted by um, an individual uh, very knowledgeable in the industry and uh, talking about um, how the consumer um, uh, experience has changed and, and how we can adapt. So um, okay. for those who are listening, please uh, see this El Paso's Facebook page for more information and registration links. And Great. that's all for the morning. I mean, all, all those are mountain time. So I know I, I, I know at least one of us is in, in, in central, central time there, so. <laughs> Okay, well, are, are we ready to kick things off officially then? Let's do it. All right, so again, welcome, um, Adriana. And you know, when you and I first met back in um, October, I think you were two days on the job. Um, <laughs> yeah. You could have predicted that uh, just a short five or six month um, time period later that you would be the economic development and tourism director under a global pandemic. So tell us how things have been going um, the first six months and then, and then now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, thanks. Uh, thanks for inviting me uh, here today and, and uh, happy National Economic Development Week. And uh, there is and, and also National Travel and Tourism Week. So uh, uh, both both this week. But uh, you're absolutely right. There there is no time. Uh, I think that economic development and tourism professionals are, are more needed um, than now uh, to help their, their communities and, and the state. Um, we met in, uh, uh, Governor Abbott appointed me to the position in October. I started in December of 2019. Um, so this is four or five months um, into, into my tenure, but I, I could not be more honored than uh, to lead the state's economic development um, initiatives uh, at any time, uh, but, but especially right now in this unprecedented time. Um, this has been um, something that no one has ever seen before. Um, Texas is no stranger to, to challenges. Uh, we've had, you know, natural disasters, um, but those, you know, come and go and they come to a specific region or to a specific area and then they're gone and then you, you rebuild and you deal with um, the aftermath of that. And this is, um, I've heard it compared to a, um, months long economic hurricane, if you will, where um, it's just, you know, continuing and we're, uh, you know, dealing with it um, as, as it's happening. And, and because it's unprecedented, it's all uh, new uh, to all of us. And, and how do we do, do our best to um, help our communities, um, help our industries? Uh, one of the things that, that we have been doing is, is like you all, um, we've been doing uh, webinars, um, some of our small business events, um, uh, our small business forums that we had planned across the state. Uh, we do about 15 a year, uh, three of them in, in each of the different five regions of our state. Um, we're not going to be able to do those in-person events, uh, so we decided to do small business webinars. Um, we, we started that, you know, two, two weeks ago. We're on our uh, third one, uh, it will be tomorrow, uh, focused in uh, the East Texas region. Uh, we've done Central Texas and North Texas. West Texas is going to be um, next week, uh, next Wednesday. Um, so, you know, we've had um, a lot of people join us for that. There's a lot of information that, that companies are looking for as far as, you know, tools and resources to help navigate this. Um, the Small Business Administration um, has uh, programs, the federal government, um, of course, has passed the, the CARES Act. And there were a lot of questions on those programs. And so we decided to put together these webinars to try to educate our, our small businesses on uh, how do you access them? What are the rules? What are the guidelines? But also connect them with their local expert resources in their community. Um, so it's been 
um, we've been we've been very busy. Well, it sounds like it, and, and you know, I'm, I I know everyone is um, hoping that someone has the answer. Uh, you know that that some crystal ball um, is out there, either the you know the federal government or the state has. Um, but I do know that that obviously we're in good hands with you. And so, just um, quickly, I, I think um, you know as we look at at moving through this um, webinar, I do want to reiterate to the group that there is a chat function. So if there are questions that you all have of Adriana, we're definitely looking forward to them and can. Um, ask her those questions as we move along. So, um, you know, ahead of next week, um, you know, who knows what things are going to transpire between now and next Wednesday. I mean, I feel like every day is kind of like a, oh, did that just happen type uh, atmosphere. Um, but looking ahead as much as we possibly can, um, is there anything that the state is doing um, that we should be, you know, either looking to provide you feedback on, um, you know, from a municipality as far as, um, you know, what programs you all are putting into place? How can we be more involved in, in the things that the state is putting putting forward? Sure. Um, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. As we're going through this, this process, we're uh, gathering as much information, gathering as much data as possible, um, Governor Abbott has appointed me to the strike force to open Texas, um, and I'm a member of the Special Advisory Council. Um, so we are, um, you know, meeting regularly. In fact, I, I'm a little bit late because we just got off of a call um, with the, the strike force members. Um, but one of the first things that we did immediately April 17th when he announced the strike force was we reached out to the different industry sectors, the different industry associations. Uh, the, the tourism industry, THLA, um, Texas Association of Manufacturers, the Restaurant Association, um, just as many statewide associations as possible, in addition to our Chambers of Commerce, our Economic Development Organizations. I reached out to the Borderplex Alliance uh, myself. Um, and not just looking at diverse industry sectors, diverse geographies within our state, diverse sizes of communities, rural communities, urban communities, and really try to get an understanding from them. Um, if you were to open, if your members were to open, how much lead time would they need? Do they have the um, equipment, facilities, supplies uh, that they would need? Are they able to provide masks for their employees? Are they able to provide masks for customers? Um, if not, you know, could they? Uh, what about increased sanitation? Uh, you know, sanitizing of workstation workstations. Um, good hygiene, signage, uh, social distancing, all of the, you know, good safety protocols that we know have, have worked uh, to help to uh, stem the tide and, and, and um, you know, flatten the curve, um, as it were, that all of our communities undertook. And, and as Texans, we, we took very seriously and responsibly. Um, you know, finding out from them, for your industry sector, what are the steps you're going to have to take or the plans that you're going to have to put in place we got some excellent feedback. Um, we, we gathered all of that feedback, um, put it together with different um, position papers, got that in front of the medical panel uh, that is um, advising uh, Governor Abbott. Um, and then the medical doctors, you know, give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down or say, yes, that works, but with these modifications. Um, and so it is, all of the decisions are being uh, made based on data based on doctors, uh, their advice and, and what they're telling us um, is, is uh, you know, potentially a workable solution or not. Um, so uh, the, the input we have gotten has been phenomenal. Thank you all so much um, for doing that. Um, and then from the tourism industry, we got input from them as well. Uh, and, and as you are seeing things, please, you know, feel free to reach out to me, feel free to reach out to um, our office um, and uh, you know, make sure that we're aware. Uh, we, we take all of that input and all of that guidance and, and pass it along to the strike force. So we, we do uh, welcome that open uh, communication and dialogue. Thank you. I do just wanna point out Jessica Herrera uh, just joined the call. So welcome Jessica, good to have you. I apologize for jumping late, Adriana. Nice to see you. Thanks hey for Jessica, good to see you too. Thank you. Sure. So Adriana, you know, Texas is um, well known and, and um, 
quite frankly, some other states are a little bit jealous of the way that the state of Texas handles uh, economic development. Mm -hmm. Having things really localized through Chapter 380, Chapter 381 agreements, and so on and so forth, really does give us the ability to be very localized with our economic development solutions. Do you see anything coming down the pike, um, you know, that we should be looking at taking advantage of, you know, from a local level, or do you see any changes to the, the economic development programs from the state level on down um, because of what's going on right now? So that, that's a great question and you're absolutely right. Um, and, I, and I tell companies and site selectors all the time, uh, Texas, um, you know, we, we do things different. Um, we do economic development like no one else in the country. Um, and I think that's actually one of our benefits. Um, something that uh, uh, really is an asset to us. It's a very decentralized process. Um, the state does not dictate where projects should or should not go. We feel that the company needs to find the location that is best suited uh, for their needs and that, that helps them to solve whatever problem it is that they're, they're trying to solve. Um, and so once they've decided on a Texas community, the state is going to come along as a partner with that community and help them to win that project and to land that project. So it's a very local driven process that then the state can come in and, and assist and help and be a partner. And, and we do see that very much as a partnership uh, between the local communities and the state. So I, I don't see that changing. I think that um, that's actually uh, one of the things that's a benefit to us. Um, and from my, you know, what I've uh, understood from, from companies and, and consultants, um, they, they really do like that and appreciate that. Um, and, you know, many of you on, on the call today know me, some of you don't, um, but uh, prior to being appointed to the Economic Development and Tourism Division, uh, I'm an economic developer with uh, more than 20 years of experience uh, working at the state, local, and regional level. I worked at the Austin Chamber of Commerce as a VP for Global Corporate Recruitment. And then prior to joining the governor's office, I was the president of the Greater San Marcos Partnership, which is a regional economic development organization. So, um, you know, from my understanding, that, that process seems to work well. Um, I think one of the things that we are doing at a state level is looking at some of the existing state programs like the Enterprise Zone program. And right now, given the situation that we are in, it's difficult to get um, original signatures, it's difficult to get. And so we're looking at our process and our application process to see how do we change that? How do we allow for electronic documents to be received? What sorts of, you know, waivers have to be done or is it a change in our application or, or what does that mean we're also working on our events uh, trust fund um, looking at the timing of those uh, we know that those events go through a competitive bidding process and you know right now some of the requirements are at 120 days and you may not have 120 days um, if it's a competitive situation so we're looking at some of those um, timing issues but we're, we're trying to be very responsive um, at this time and and really uh, find ways to help our community partners so that some of these you know processes and applications are, are easier so um brian she um adrian or adriana um ventured into the, the tourism aspect just a little bit there and, and we all know obviously right now that um, tourism is taking a, a massive hit in our hotel industry. Um, you know, they're really struggling and in some areas, you know, the only money that they're making is um, by working with municipalities off of, you know, homeless populations. So, I mean, who, again, would have thought that we would have been here just yeah. a, few, um, a few months ago. So, Brian, do you have any questions in particular that you want to add um, related to tourism? Uh, thanks, Andrea. No, see, so you're correct. Uh, the local area, obviously the state as a whole, the nation, uh, we've seen a considerable drop off in occupancy and travel um, related to the global pandemic. El Paso is no different. Uh, right, we are seeing still uh, some essential travel and some of that in our, our hotel properties. 
Uh, we are watching our occupancy here very closely. Um, coming off of what was some of the highest occupancy in the state uh, in you know the 72 to 74 percent range, uh, routinely really enjoying a great um, economic position there. It's been very difficult for our industry um, to to have that disappear. But that's probably true probably everywhere in the state. I think you know we're looking at what what are we going to be able to do in terms of recovery. And uh, as you mentioned, you know the state is uh, very familiar with you know dealing with specific regions being impacted by hurricanes or other types of weather events or other types of catastrophe events that then that, that it builds a recovery plan for. This can be a little bit different, of course. It's, it's the whole state and it's not just the state, it's the nation and it's the world. So that That's right. the, the situation is a little bit different. I wonder if there's anything you could speak to in terms of things that your office is looking at specifically uh, related to restarting um, the tourism engine. Um, you know, we work very closely with Brad uh, and his team and and um, we were on a number of their webinars with MMGY and others. They're talking about the different things that they're doing to uh, programs and, and co-ops and other things. And we were pleased to see uh, a lot of the participatory programs that that office put together that didn't really require uh, an investment or a significant investment from the local community, which was great. Um, I don't know if you want to be able to talk more about that or some things that you're thinking of maybe that are new or different um, that'll be coming our way. Sure. Um, and uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, well, first of all, Brad is, um, I think he's participating on this call. I invited him, so uh, he may be He's on. here, I see him. Yeah, he's, he's here. here. He's probably uh, waving so, <laughs> Yeah, so he may, he may um, want to want to chime in, but um, uh, we do a uh, newsletter that goes out to our um, uh, economic development partners uh, tourism, of course, has their own newsletter that goes out to their partners, but uh, we did one and we added in there um, some of the tourism research and, and the um, impacts um, that, that, have, that we have seen um, through, this, um, th through COVID-19. Um, one of the things that uh, you know, we, we talk about, and, and I've been keeping track with the U.S. Travel Association as well, um, you know, nationally, this is uh, I think now nine times the impact of 9-11. Um, and we know in our lifetimes, you know, the impact that 9-11 had on, on travel and tourism um, and how significant that was. And this is a, a multitude, you know, a, a factor of nine um, times uh, that, that significant of an impact. So it, it's definitely um, affecting our state and it affects communities large and small. This isn't something that is just affecting, you know, the, the large, the urban areas. It also affects the smaller communities as well. Um, so it is something that we're monitoring. Um, one of the things that um, tourism did, of course, immediately was change the advertising strategy. Um, advertising stopped um, internationally and domestically. Um, as we're looking at uh, bringing back um, advertising as travel, you know, starts to, to happen and people start uh, venturing out, uh, refocusing that strategy to more of a drive time market. Um, so we're not going to be advertising in New York or in California. We're going to be focusing our advertising a little bit closer to home and even within the state of Texas. So that Texans, you know, who are in San Antonio may want to get out and may want to, you know, go visit El Paso or go, you know, visit um, West Texas or go to Big Bend or, you know, once, once it's safe to do so. Uh, some of the things that the um, PR firm has been doing is really focusing on social media um, nationally and really kind of um, inspiring, uh, inspiring images of Texas, inspiring people to come and, and, uh, and visit when they're able to. And of course, using the hashtag Texas to do soon. We can't Texas to do now, but when we can, we will do it soon. And, um, and I think that's just been a really great creative um, effort to kind of uh, shift the focus, you know, be, in, be more inspirational and aspirational um, than just sort of, um, um, you know, uh, transactional, uh, I would say. Um, so, you know, these are some of the shifts that we've done on the tourism side. Um, we're, we're hoping, you know, soon when we're able to travel that we can, um, you know, garner some of the, those visitors, not just from out of state, uh, from nearby states, but within the state uh, that we have, you know, people sort of moving around um, within that drive time market. Um, but I, I think, you know, the, the focus on the recovery is really going to be on, on the uh, reopening of the economy, the opening of the economy, um, which uh, last week, um, Governor Abbott 
made his announcement um, that, you know, which were the industry sectors that were going to open first, um, retail um, on uh, Friday, May 1st, um, retail, restaurants, um, museums, libraries, um, all at 25% capacity for some counties uh, that have, you know, five cases or less at 50% capacity. So this is a very slow, strategic, uh, methodical, phased approach to opening the economy, looking at sort of, well, HEB has been able to successfully have their stores open with proper safety protocols and six feet distancing. So why don't we extend that to other retailers as well? Um, and so it was kind of taking a, a model that we saw that worked and applying that for all retail. Um, and then from a restaurant perspective, you know, many restaurants stayed open um, and they got real creative. They were doing curbside pickup. They were doing uh, drive through, especially some of the full service restaurants, um, the alcohol to go, uh, which apparently has been very, very uh, popular. Um, so, you know, we've, we've been creative in sort of how we find solutions to some of these problems. Um, and, you know, 25% capacity is not, um, is not a, a, you know, full service, um, but it was a way to kind of step into, you know, uh, you know, kind of a, a step at a time back into restaurants at full capacity and kind of testing it out. If we do 25% and, you know, servers are wearing masks and there's no condiments on the table and there's disinfecting happening between clients and menus are disposable, like what are the other um, ways that we can eliminate touch points so that there, there's, a, you know, minimized contact um, and we're gonna, you know, see how that goes, and then the next step, you know, and then the next step. But we're we're constantly reviewing and, and looking at that data. Yeah, and I would think the thing for us is really going to be the the tools um, that the state can make available to be able to support that. Um, I think that you mentioned you're looking at some things related to the event trust fund or other types of, um, you know, tools the state has, and maybe like you mentioned you're looking at what some of those rules and things are that that the that the office can adjust. I think that's going to be important because I think that uh, I think Texas is taking a lead here, and there's going to be there'll be opportunities where there'll be events and things that will want to you get, get back out there and begin the recovery and some states are going to be open and others may not be as open and that gives us an opportunity to attract that business to Texas and some of that may be in short term um, you know competitive set windows to be able to attract that activity here um, right so definitely appreciate that your your office is looking at that I I'm just curious I don't know if, if you and the governor's office are uh, having any communication at the federal level about the reopening of the US Mexico border here in obviously in El Paso that's a significant contributor for us in both daily and you know longer term uh, visitations, uh, and it's a big part of the economic engine of our region. Uh, I think that's going to be one of the keys for our recovery. I think there's probably really two significant keys. One is uh, reopening the border and, and welcoming back um, uh, Mexican nationals to uh, El Paso and the region. And the other is, as you mentioned, people are going to. I think road trips are going to be more popular this summer, and so you know we're looking at obviously our our drive distances um, in the outside areas. So, but I don't know if you can speak to that at all and if your office is involved in any, in, in any recommendations regarding uh, the border. Um, I'm actually the co-chair of the, the work group um, with the um, strike force that looks at workforce development, um, economic development and international trade. So international trade is, is something that we are looking at um, not just from a visitor perspective, but also from a parts and supplies perspective. Um, we have, uh, you know, a lot of essential manufacturers have remained open. Um, the, the next conversation is to look at non-essential manufacturers and, and having them open, again, following safety protocols and social distancing and uh, sanitizing stations and all of that. The issue is that some of our manufacturers rely on Mexican supply chains. And if Mexico is not operating and they're not, um, you know, providing those those supplies, those parts, then our manufacturers over here, even if we're, uh, even if they're permitted to be open, may not be open uh, simply because they don't have access to the parts. So, um, the 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 trade, the the travel uh, and cross border um, uh, relationship in terms of visitors and trade is something that that is being looked at. Um, we are um, having uh, conversations um, along those lines and 
Um, at this point, you know, no decision has been made, um, but, uh, but those conversations are, are happening. Adriana, I had a quick question. Um, when, you know, we're looking at, at just the compliance um, portion of a lot of, you know, the agreements that we have um, here with a, a number of just different companies that have experienced a reduction in their labor force or just any of that. And I know that um, you all probably are, are looking at very similar um, areas with um, uh, many of the clients that have these enterprise zone designations or enterprise fund. Um, uh, are there compliance um, uh, measures that that you're going to to help uh, most of these companies either through maybe extensions or deferrals or uh, modifications to to those agreements at a state level we're look taking a look at those on a case-by-case -case basis um, we we you know thought there would be a flurry of um, you know requests um, and, and we actually haven't seen a, a lot of requests come through. And, and, and in fact, um, I think some of the staff reached out and said, you know, are you okay? Are you gonna be okay? I mean, for a couple that were like, you know, no, we're gonna need some more time or uh, some of those have been, um, uh, you know, requests for extensions, requests for contract extensions. Uh, we, you know, we, we're, we know that this is a uh, unprecedented situation. And so we're, we're taking that into account um, but, uh, you know, we, we will look at it, of course, on a case by case basis. Very good. Um, so I think we're trying to get Brad Smith um, on the line. Brooke, have you been able to, to get him in? I can add him right now. Brad, I'm coming for you. <laughs> I saw that Brad posted on the chat. Um, the tourism recovery advertising strategy, um, but this would be a great time for him to speak to that. So while I was going to say, while he's getting on, he I, I have your next ad campaign. So it's going to be social distance big in Texas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hi, happy welcome, National Travel welcome, and Tourism. Brad. Thank you. Yeah, I'd just like to um, thank you for joining, um, you know, inviting me to join you all. And um, just reiterate something about what Adriana touched on. The travel program in the Office of the Governor Economic Development and Tourism Office has created a tourism recovery advertising strategy um, that will um, promote Texas to the regional drive market and to Texans. Um, we know that Texans interact with the Travel Texas program, own channels like our website, our social media, our e-newsletters and that they do see some of our ads and our public relations activities. But in the past, we've always been focused on marketing to non-Texans to bring money into the state and create that economic development for the state as an export oriented industry. But, you know, considering the current COVID situation, we've re-strategized our advertising plan and we are now offering um, an, a program that targets the regional drive market and also for the first time since probably 9-11 targets Texans to travel and encourage them to get out and travel in Texas when the time is right. And that strategy offers a lot of co-op opportunities for state travel industry partners at, to participate in free or at a very low cost. There's matching opportunities, one-to-one -one matches. So there's a lot of opportunities there for partners to participate in. And you can, I, I posted the information on the chat room there. So you can go to that and sign up begins this Wednesday at nine o'clock central standard time. Hey, no, this is awesome. So um, appreciate you hopping on the call kind of at the, the last minute. And, you know, oddly, um, I, I did hear from some folks over the weekend that were talking about some Texas uh, advertisements in AAA. So I don't know if you guys have already um, been getting out there, but but definitely the word is out that Texas is the place to be driving around in. So so anyway, so thank you. Um, so briefly, I'm um, just kind of um, shifting gears a little bit. Um, Brian had mentioned, you know, the border and, you know, we understand that you know, right now things are, are not necessarily um, going great for um, our neighbors next door over in Mexico. And so that's kind of scary, but um, you know, looking at the, um, the, the opportunity that Texas has to be able to attract 
um, some of those companies that have been operating offshore uh, and really get them to, you know, not only onshore here in, in Texas, um, but also maybe near shore or whatever we want to call right next door. Um, what, what is the state doing to try and attract some of those um, companies looking to relocate and how can we uh, better position El Paso to, to be a part of that conversation? So um, as far as prospect activity is going, um, we're, we're still seeing strong prospect activity. We're still getting uh, requests for information in and we're still sending those out to our community partners. Um, we're going to do a, a um, virtual outreach to our site selector consultant community and um, let them know uh, that you know, the state continues to be open for business in fact, we have received a couple of unsolicited um, um, calls from companies that are located on uh, either the East Coast or the West Coast that are saying, um, we appreciate, we have been watching how Texas is, is uh, doing this and, and the, the phased approach to opening. Uh, it seems to make sense. It's a very common sense approach and, and we're questioning why we're located where we are right now. So. Uh, maybe we shouldn't be here. And we're like, of course you shouldn't be there. <laughs> of course you should be in Texas. What are you doing? Um, so, so we are getting those, those calls now from an international perspective um, uh, as well. I think as some of our uh, Texas based companies are finding supply chain issues. Um, and we saw that early on with um, suppliers from China, when China shut down their manufacturing operations, um, they started looking for other um, potential suppliers. Uh, the, the governor uh, at the very um, start organized the, the governor's um, supply strike force, uh, which was intended to help the state secure the medical, critical medical equipment and supplies that we needed um, early on when we were uh, concerned with, uh, you know, overwhelming numbers of, of hospitalizations and, and COVID cases. Um, and so that strike force actually started uh, working with local Texas companies, local Texas manufacturers that in many cases retool their manufacturing um, to instead of make whatever they were making, uh, retool to do face masks, to do face shields, to do uh, ventilators. Um, and some of those required um, assistance finding suppliers. Um, our uh, industry specialists who we're now calling our, our uh, business retention and expansion team they went out and, and helped some of these manufacturers find Texas-based suppliers. So that's another one of the things that we're doing is working with our existing companies to make sure that they have the supplies or that they can grow or that they know uh, about tools uh, that might be av available to help them. So, um, you know, we're, we're still uh, actively um, uh, recruiting, uh, even though we can't travel um, we're finding other ways uh, to do that to get our message out. Um, the state of Texas Mexico office, uh, which is located in, in Mexico City, um, is still actively working and I know that they're uh, working on a um, virtual webinar with Mexican companies uh, to talk to them about um, the, the benefits of operating in Texas. So um, that's uh, that that's one event that's um, coming up and and uh, if you're not aware of it, I'll make sure that you get the information for that. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so it does look like we've had a question come in from the audience. I'm not sure, uh, Adriana, if you want to answer this or Brad, but um, Jacob Garza says, with El Paso being at the far tip of West Texas, what is the target drive time we are aiming to advertise within the, um, the drive of Big in Texas? Um, I'll, I'll take a stab at that. Um, well, first of all, we know that as um, travel reopens, that um, people will um, travel within their city. They'll start getting more comfortable visiting their local restaurants and attractions or revisiting their favorite places in their cities. So we know that that staycation and that um, the, the, the work that the CVBs are doing to target the, their local residents um, is very important. But then as traveler, everything is so local right now, but then as travelers become more comfortable, they will start to drive farther distances within Texas. And then they will also 
start to do more road trips and the, the travel intent surveys that we're um, getting and all the information we're getting from the industry is talking about this will be such a strong year for road trips. So we will be targeting a drive market that is not only our touch states, but it is also um, what we have, what we consider both drive market and fly drive market. So it's a market that goes as far north as Illinois actually, and as far west as Arizona, and as far east as Georgia. Of course, how we advertise in those markets will depend upon, you know, what is going on in those in each state at that time but it, it's beyond just new mexico and colorado and oklahoma even those those touch states louisiana will be very important it will go beyond just the touch states and of yeah, course Texans. so yeah no, no no that makes total sense yeah and, you know, when I lived in Washington, D.C., it was like driving from one end of the city to the other was, you know, a day trip, right? But, but I think when you live somewhere where you're used to driving, it is definitely relative. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, Brian, it looks like Brian has a question. Hit it. Yeah, so I was just going to ask um, uh, for Adriana. Um, air service and air service recovery really right so both from both a travel perspective but also from a general economic development position um el paso have been working very aggressively over the last five to ten years to continue to develop uh, air service specifically direct air service markets etc um, obviously nationally air service is totally different right now and the reduction in flights and then flights that are even scheduled a lot of cancellations and being adjusted by the airlines um any any thought from the state in terms of how the state can help support air service recovery, air service development. Obviously, we're interested in how that will affect us here in El Paso, but I assume that that's gonna be a topic for communities all across Texas. I'll unmute myself. Um, yeah, I don't believe that we have a, a plan regarding air service recovery. Um, we do have, you know, we're home to two of the airlines um, here in Texas, and so, uh, their success is is um, very very important and their survival um, as well. Um, and airlines, of course, are are you know probably one of the worst hit um, in in all of this. I think that um, the last statistic I saw, and Brad, you may correct me if I'm wrong, they're they're down ninety percent um, of their their norm. Yeah, international flights are down somewhere in the nineties, depending upon you know what market. Um, like Adriana said, the state doesn't have an incentive program to incentivize flights. Um, however, from a tourism marketing perspective, um, especially for international flights, um, we work with airlines and our CBB and city partners to find ways to promote routes and encourage airlines to keep routes. Um, so as, as international markets start opening back up, like Mexico or Canada or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. We'll certainly be looking to see how we can work with CVBs and the airlines to promote those routes to, you know, try and make sure that they're successful. And in the past, we haven't done that so much on a city, on a domestic flight level because so many airports are competing for those flights. But that's definitely something, you know, I think we would certainly look to, to work with our partners in the industry on. Great. Yeah, I think it was really more, the, the, from my angle, was the, the new things or different things the state would do. I, I'm familiar with what, uh, what you were talking about in terms of how you supported international routes and markets. And I, I think that giving some consideration to how we might support some of the domestic markets as well, and not maybe not necessarily for a long-term strategy, but really in sort of this ramp back, you know, it's just like you're doing already, Brad, with some of the programs that you guys have been releasing last month um, that are that are a little bit different than what you've done in the past as an effort to build and, and, and take us on the road to recovery. Yeah, that's a great point. And since we're talking about different um, types of incentive programs, you know, the, again, the state of Texas has kind of led the way when it comes to um, you know, really looking at incentivizing new and, and burgeoning industries, if you will. So I know that there's um, a, a space development corporation that the state of Texas um, can help fund and provide some resources to. 
are you all looking at ramping up programs like that or will you see more likely a decline in those type of programs as some of the resources will be going to keeping um, existing businesses in, in, in place or, or a mix there? Yeah, I don't think we're we're looking at um, either increasing or decreasing something like the the spaceport um, trust fund. Um, you know, the, the the space industry is something that is uh, you know growing and, and burgeoning, and is something that you know we definitely want to be at the forefront of. Um, and we have uh, the, the history and the 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 knowledge and the the workforce behind it. Um, so I think we'll, we'll be you know maintaining that. Um, one of the things that we did do is looking at our um, economic development finance tools like the product development and small business incubator fund. Um, that is a fund that's used primarily for small businesses that are looking to develop new products um, to use to, to you know, purchase equipment. Um, one of the things that we did um, was we presented to the board in this time to have um, give us the flexibility to approve some of those loans um, within the bank itself so that we don't have to um, go out to the board and, and it takes a long time. So if we've got Texas small businesses, small manufacturers that are pivoting, as I said, pivoting and they're going to start producing PPE, there's a tool, there's a, a financial resource for them where uh, they can take a, a loan out you know, with the state uh, through our product development fund um, and it would be, you know, on an expedited um, process because we're, we're doing it um, in-house. Um, so that's, you know, one of the tools that we've kind of adjusted um, for this. Um, I think right now uh, our focus is um, helping our existing companies, helping our small businesses uh, make it through this, uh, helping our existing businesses to, to grow um, and expand and, and um, you know, uh, maintain uh, operations. Um, and then on the other side, also attracting new investment um, into the state. So it's it's a, a very much a three pronged approach. And then of course we've got Travel Texas uh, doing an excellent job on the tourism side. The Texas Film Commission. Um, we are still receiving proposals from the Film Commission from from productions that are planning on a, a future production. Uh, not able to start shooting right now or, or right away. Uh, but we are, you know, looking at these um, future productions that are, are looking to uh, apply to the, the moving image um, incentive program. Uh, and then the music office, uh, the music office, you know, a lot of our small businesses that were affected by this are in tourism, the tourism industry and the hospitality industry and the music industry. Um, and so all of our different divisions have been working with these, uh, you know, industry partners and industry businesses to, to help them through this time. Well, it definitely sounds like an encouraging time to, to be in Texas, I guess, if you're going to have to live through a global pandemic. So um, I think we only have about two minutes left. Do any of the other panelists have a question uh, that they want to pose before we wrap things up? Adriana, what advice do you have for the economic development just across the state? I know you probably interact with uh, a number of us on a daily basis just across um, what what feedback do you have for us just moving forward? What opportunities? I mean, I know that we need to be creative right now and really kind of think out of the box and and encourage even our elected officials to, to put a policy in place that could also be supportive of continued expansion across the state. I think that um, it's a it's you know, th this is an all hands on deck moment. Um, this is, you know, within communities. Uh, everyone sort of pulling together and, and working together, whether it's the ED organization, the chamber, the CVB, uh, the city government, the county, it's, you know, er, er, we're all in this together. Um, from a statewide perspective, it's the same thing, you know, with your regional neighbors, uh, you know, with your regional organizations, and then uh, the communities and the state, you know, we're, we're all going to work on this together. Um, and I think it's a, it's a multi-pronged approach. You've got your uh, the small businesses that need help, you know, some of them need immediate assistance. And so, you know, taking care of them, taking care of the existing companies, um, as we're hearing issues from our existing Texas companies, whether those are supply chain issues, um, you know, whatever it may be, uh, we're, we're, you know, getting in there and, and trying to help or trying to find them the resources so that they can help. Um, I have been doing 
uh, not just our own small business webinars, but these virtual town hall meetings with the Texas Workforce Commission and the, the local workforce development boards. Um, through that process, and, and I want to say, you know, we've probably done 40 uh, town hall or webinar meetings in 30 days. Um, I, I don't quite know how, <laughs> how mathematically that worked, but, um, but the, the Texas Workforce Commission has really been getting out there with their attorneys, uh, particularly Commissioner Demerson, who's the, the Commissioner for Texas Employers, to answer those questions about unemployment insurance. Um, you know, th there was such a demand for unemployment. Uh, the claims that came in over, you know, a, a one day period, I think in one day they had a million calls. Uh, those are numbers that have never been seen before. For the Small Business Administration Program, I've heard a statistic that they processed 14 years worth of loans in 14 days. So the, the um, responsiveness that, that was at first told, you know, you'll, you apply, you'll get an answer in three days, you know, three days turned into two weeks just because of volume, just because the, the volume was such that, you know, just being able to manage that. Um, so I think from, a, from an economic developer perspective, uh, being as up to date on these programs as possible so that you are a resource um, within your community, um, the, the partnership, right, working with your, you know, local partners, your regional partners and the state um, as a partner, and then um, you know, focusing on your small businesses. Hey, we've got someone that joined us in the meeting. <laughs> um, Somebody's reminded me that it's lunchtime over here. It's so. lunchtime. Um, but, you know, working with our small businesses because they're in immediate need, uh, working with our existing companies to make sure that they're, they're taken care of, and then continuing to market. And, and how we're going to market is going to be uh, something new and creative um, and, and probably something that looks very much like this. Um, but, you know, we, we are going to continue to get our message out there. And I think that Governor Abbott's message is really resonating outside of the state of Texas. Um, this, this very, um, you know, common sense, slow, focused on the health and safety of Texans, focused on protecting our vulnerable population, but still, uh, while at the same time, making sure that people can, can maintain their livelihoods and can uh, you know, put food on their table and, and pay their rent and take care of their families um, is, is, uh, is also important. So, um, and, and we're seeing that in the calls that we're getting um, from companies that are like, I see what it is that you're doing. I see what the governor is doing and I appreciate that. And, you know, maybe I'm in the wrong place and I should be going to Texas to which we're like, that is so spot on. That's right. Thumbs up. All right. all right, so I think we'll kick it back to, to Brooke here to wrap us up, and then we want to give everybody a reminder of all the other upcoming events we have this week, celebrating National Travel and Tourism Week and Economic Development Week here in El Paso and throughout the state and the nation. So, Brooke, if you want to run through the list, and uh, we'll thank our panelists for taking the time to join us. Brad, for being an impromptu guest, being ready, being ready to go. Thanks for joining us, Brad, as well. Yes, thank you all. We appreciate your attendance and, and the insights you provided us. Um, I know I ran through some of them earlier um, in on the call, uh, but I do want to remind you that we've got a, a number of things lined up to celebrate National Travel and Tourism Week, and it doesn't only include webinars. We've got a great uh, cooking demonstration by the chef Andres Pavia at the New Plaza Hotel, uh, and that'll be, uh, I believe, Wednesday at, uh, at noon. Um, but we also have a tour of our uh, wonderful and historic uh, mission trail, the oldest continuously working mission trail in the, in the country. And so please check that out. That will be Friday. Um, and then we've got um, bands and a music showcase, if you will, for Saturday. So if you'll take a look at our Facebook page, you can get details and times and information all there at Visit El Paso. And if you're not already a uh, a fan of the page, please like it and get regular updates from our team. And that's all I have. Thank you all very much. If there aren't any other questions or if there are questions afterwards, please feel free to submit them and we'll get you the answers um, necessary. And, and we've also recorded this. So if you would like a copy of that, uh, please reach out. 
I just want to once again thank Andrea and Jessica, Brad and Adriana uh, for joining us. And of course, Brooke for making all this happen with our team. Uh, we really appreciate everyone taking the time to join us here uh, this morning. And uh, we're looking forward to a great week talking about our road to recovery. Uh, Texas is strong, El Paso is strong, and uh, we're, we're, we know that we're gonna be able to be uh, get on the other side of this here very soon. So we appreciate everyone's questions and taking the time uh, to participate with us here today. Thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate everyone's participation. Thanks. Great. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.